Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today is all about capturing an image using DISM. I think on the last little mini episode, part two, I show you guys how to create a WinPE.ISO file, and we are going to capture our reference image, right? Because the reference image we did it on part one. So let's get started. So first things first, as you can see, uh, our ISO that we created in part two. So this ISO, this WinPE file, I took it and I kind of uploaded it into the data store of my vSphere. And I went into my VM, went to edit settings, went to CD and DVD, I browsed for an ISO. And again, like I said, I uploaded that ISO already inside the data store of my VMware EXI. Uh, so I'm gonna select it and I'm going to go into options. And within options, I'm gonna go to boot options and I'm gonna check off the next time the virtual machine boots, force entry into the BIOS setup because I need to change the, the boot order. Press okay, click on start. It's gonna start loading up and automatically take me to the BIOS. We need to get into the boot and I'm gonna rearrange everything to the point that CD-ROM is first because CD-ROM is where our WinPE ISO file is uh, kind of attached. And I'm going to do a F10, which allows me to save and exit. Hit enter for yes. It's gonna boot up and say press any key uh, to boot from the CD or DVD. So you can hit enter, spacebar, whatever, and it's gonna load up and boom, done. So now you're within your WinPE that we created in part two. So I'm going to do a CD backslash hit enter and I'm going to do a CLS to clear it out. Give me some nice little real estate and the command that we need to do to capture our reference image. Now, the WinPE that we created in part two, we need to boot our reference image using that WinPE ISO. Once we're booted into our ISO, with the reference image that we created, right? We need to capture it. So the following command needs to be done. Uh, DISM forward slash capture dash image space forward slash image file colon open quotations D colon backslash the name of the WIMP file and then you're gonna close the quotation space forward slash capture DIR colon d colon backslash space forward slash name dot whatever name you want to give it space and i'm going to compress it because it's a pretty huge file and i did a forward slash compress colon max once you hit enter the deployment image servicing and management tool should start and it should start saving the image now, depending on how intense you created your reference image, if you have like applications like Office 365 or Office 2016 or 2019, Acrobat Professional, whatever, uh, saving the image is gonna, you know, it's gonna take some time. Once everything is done, you get the 100%. Cool. So you're probably saying to yourself, how am I going to get that WIMP file? Pretty easy. So you're gonna restart the machine. Uh, configure the machine like it's brand new. Most likely you're going to get the OOBE, open box experience, just follow it through. Once you're done with that and you're within the desktop, you're gonna go to start and you're gonna go to this PC, go to the C drive. Now within the DISM console, your C drive is your D drive, really weird. And then when you go to your C drive, the root of the C drive, you're going to see your WIM file. Now my WIM file is basically three gigs. That's not that bad. I think if I did not do the compress attribute, most likely it'd been between five gigs, but three gigs is not that bad. And that's it guys, that is how we capture an image using DISM and also our WinPE bootable ISO that we created in part two. Uh, super excited, we're gonna continue this little mini series. Hopefully you guys enjoy this part three, leave comments right below and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.